Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I'm all the way here in Detroit, Michigan to drive the 2024 Buick Encore GX. And I know what you're thinking. David, how could this North American product compete with some of the best from Japan like Toyota Corolla Cross or some of the similar products in this price range? Well, you might be surprised to find out, first of all, this is built and engineered in Korea by GM Korea Company. So it behaves very differently from a traditional General Motors product. And secondly, the overall quality and the manufacturing quality is surprisingly good. So let me show you what I like or might not like on this new Buick Encore GX. Welcome back. So right off the bat, I'm going to be doing my quality audit to see how good the manufacturing build quality is on this Encore GX. And because it's built in Korea, it goes through the same kind of standard that many Asian products go through. And that's why I'm finding that the overall quality is surprisingly good. So for example, if I were to measure the gap of these panels, as I always do, would you believe it's 2.9 millimeter here, three millimeter here, and exactly three millimeter here. So the actual gap from the front all the way to the back it's better than most of the Toyota products even, and indeed better than most other North American products. I will say that uh, the edge here on the corner has a little bit of a defect because it's curved a little bit and this part is sticking out a little bit higher than this side, uh, although it looks okay on that side. Now what about the rest of the panels? Between the front fender and the front door, it's also three millimeter, and between the front door and the rear door, 3.1 millimeter and between the rear door and the rear fender 3.3 millimeter. What about in the trunk area here by the rear hatch? It's about 5 millimeters. So usually the hatch area is always a little bit wider to accommodate for the engineering of the fifth door here. But in terms of the actual panel gap from front to back averaging about 3 to 3.2 millimeter, this is better than almost any other products I've seen in this price range and either matching or even better than many of the Toyota products, which really surprised me. This is getting into the territory of a Lexus models, just in terms of the manufacturing quality for the exterior panels. What about the paint job? Well, as I look through on the side panel here, uh, it has a very consistent paint and actually reasonably good uh, level of orange peel, so we don't have too much orange peel. But I would say the amount of clear coat is a little bit less than what I like to see because the gloss and the consistency of the clear coat could be a little bit better. So I would say paint job is pretty good, but not as impressive as the actual panel fit and panel alignment. Now let me take my paint thickness gauge and see how thick the paint is, which will also give me indication of the overall quality of the paint job. So now I have my paint thickness gauge, which measures the total amount of paint above the sheet metal. So that includes the uh, a number of layers of the paint, the clear coat, as well as the undercoating. Now most um, paint thickness is between 100 to 180 microns. Thicker the better, obviously, for durability reasons. But these days, many manufacturers try to cut it very close to about 100 to cut cost and to obviously save weight as well. So let's see how thick the paint is on this Buick Encore GX. 208 microns in the front hood, which is surprisingly thick. What about the rest of the body panels? 183 on the front fender and the front door. 198, also really, really quite thick actually. 190, this is surprising because most uh, brands only have about 120 these days. And 184, so we are ranging kind of 180 to 200 microns all the way through, which is almost twice as thick in terms of total paint applied compared to a typical Toyota car, which is about 110 to 120, uh, because most brands are trying to save money, so they really cut back on the amount of paint that's applied in the car, but thankfully, this car actually has a lot of paint applied. And that is a really good thing, because overall, for long-term durability, if you're driving in the winter and uh, the road debris or sand or uh, salt is kicking up into the car and hitting the paint, you want the paint thickness to be as thick as possible for, for our benefit. For manufacturer's benefit, they don't want that. They want to keep it thin to save the weight and to also save money. So the good news for potential buyers of this Encore GX is that the thickness of the paint far exceeds your average in the industry. And in fact, it's a lot thicker than most Toyota products. 
So let's open the hood as well and do a quick uh, manufacturing and quality audit inside the engine compar compartment. Uh, this engine, by the way, is a 1.3 liter engine, turbocharged three cylinder engine, uh, which uh, it is a little bit weak in terms of overall feel, but um, because it's turbocharged engine, it has a pretty good pep at lower RPM. But right now I'm looking for manufacturing quality in terms of how they put the um, powertrain together. And you can see in, just like in many Toyota product, they have these colored marks here to indicate that it was done correctly. And this is sort of a, a secondary way to double check and confirm that the manufacturing was done correctly. And all of the actual quality of work seems pretty good. The uh, actual taping and uh, the way things put together is good. There's lots of space in the engine compartment here and uh, lots of good materials for sound deadening as well. And this is actually sealant that they applied uh, to, for uh, sound deadening and also isolating the noise from, from the road. And again, you see more colored marks to indicate the manufacturing was done correctly. So inside looks pretty good. What about the welding on the hood here? This is these days glued together as opposed to welded, uh, but all the seams looks good. And the quality of the hem, this is what we call the hemming around the corner here, looks pretty good as well. So now I'm inside the Buick Encore GX and I'm going to check for manufacturing quality, see how well they put all the parts together in terms of the interior parts and interior materials. So I do my usual punch test to see if I can make something loose to see if I feel any squeaks or rattles. A little bit on the door here, but everything else feels pretty solid. And so far in my drive, I did not hear an ounce of squeaks or rattle. It's been pretty solid and it feels actually very quiet in the car. But what about the actual fit and finish of the variety of different parts that we have? Well, the good thing is that they have used some softer materials in the dash here and here, and even the door, the upper areas, it's also the softer materials. Um, but at the same time, uh, I find the whole thing a little bit cheap looking compared to some other Asian uh, brands, particularly if you compare it to Toyota, uh, because some of the stitchings do not look quite right. So this is actually a fake stitching on the dash panel here. Um, but more than that, this material, which is a uh, uh, injected uh, soft plastic, looks a little bit cheap. It looks too fake compared to, let's say, something you find in a Toyota product where they've done the injection really well and it almost looks like authentic leather materials even though it's also a fake. Uh, having said that, I'm glad the dash is at least soft materials. Also more fake stitching here and I think they could have just removed these fake stitching. It doesn't look right to me. But I do like the silver trim here more so than, let's say, a shiny uh, glossy black which I don't like very much because they scratch too easily. And you have this big screen here, which actually consists of two screens put together behind this glass. And uh, this is one of the first time that a uh, car in this price range have placed two screens side by side, kind of a European or slash Mercedes style. And so it's pretty impressive to have that in the car of this price range. Uh, otherwise, the way they put the leather together in the steering here, the button feel are all pretty good. It's got a good tactile feel in here. I don't know why the volume button here is so small. Uh, this is way too small and hard to even see. But the um, rest of the smaller buttons works. At least we have buttons, that's better than nothing. We also get both uh, USB-C and USB-A, which is great when a lot, lot of the manufacturers have moved away from offering USB-A. Uh, we get one of each. And we still get 12 volt, isn't that surprising? So in terms of consumer uh, friendliness or their ability to provide as much future as possible, this one has many, many things standard uh, that are not standard on many of the other competitors' product. Uh, in terms of the materials here, this all looks good. Sometimes these headliners can be a little bit loose and they make a little bit of noise when you touch them. No, that's not the case here. It looks totally solid. And all the buttons here also feels very, very good very tactile feel, uh, as you would expect because this is a, a Korean product with likely Korean suppliers, uh, which by the way shares some of the same technology and same technique as Japanese suppliers, so you get a similar feel as in a finished product. So the interior is actually quite good, the seats are comfortable, there's not a lot of space in the back because it is, it is a small car, uh, but overall the fit and finish is acceptable and maybe even above average. I'm just not too crazy about the choice of material and the, t the way they put the materials together uh, because I really don't like this fake stitching in here and some of this plastic uh, looks a little bit cheap to me. But I uh, love the big screen, 
consisting of two panels and everything else in terms of buttons and ergonomics are actually quite good as well. So now I'm driving the Buick Encore GX and it is a delightful experience because this thing actually drives like a small European car, more like a, you know, kind of Volkswagen Golf feel than a traditional American product. In fact, I would say that in terms of how it handles twisty corners and turns, it does it far better than many other smaller Asian products, including some Toyota products, in the sense that it's track straight, uh, it has a good feedback from the road, and it stays pretty flat around the corners. Uh, even when I move the steering quickly left and right like this, you can tell that the car responds quickly to my, my hands and to the steering input, and it tracks uh, straight all the way through. Uh, the ride is smooth, predictable, and balanced. It's not too bumpy. It handles rough roads pretty good. And overall, the feel is actually quite sporty and fun to drive. I would have never thought that I would use the word fun to drive with the Buick brand, but they are literally in kind of resurrection mode and they're changing their entire business model to try to cater to uh, more of a premium market with a sporting flair. And I can see how that is already influencing this particular product because honestly, this drives like a small premium European product, much more so than a traditional Asian or American product in this price range. I will admit that the engine feels a little bit underpowered. I could use more power and uh, torque for sure. But because it's turbocharged and it tends to kick in at low RPM, you won't notice it in a normal city driving. If you step on it, it takes off pretty good. Uh, just that if you're trying to pass a car on the highway, then yes, it could be a bit overwhelming for this engine. I did wish that they improved it along with this big refresh, which they did for the Encore for 2024, and that would have been ideal. But I suppose for them to provide this car in this price range, they probably couldn't make all of the changes they wanted to make. But perhaps in the future, they will make further uh, enhancements to the powertrain, which will be uh, welcomed in this model. But even the way it is right now, in terms of the overall balance of the steering, the handling, the turbocharged engine, and the quietness of the, of the cabin, and the suspension damping is actually very good. The point where I would say some of the other Asian products from Nissan, from Hyundai, even from Toyota, may have a bit of a catching up to do because this one has the right amount of balance that is often missing in many other products in this price range. So as you can tell, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised and very delighted by the Buick Encore GX, especially driving around this twisty area here, because in terms of value for money and what you get is top notch. What do you guys think of this Buick Encore GX? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Would you even consider a Buick brand? Because most of us probably do not consider this brand anymore. Um, well, I'm really interested in knowing your feedback, but if you've never driven a Buick before, I would uh, encourage you to give it a try, drive the Encore GX, go and drive the Nissan Kicks, or even the Toyota Corolla Cross, which is obviously a little bit bigger than this. And you might actually be asking yourself why you wouldn't consider this, because the drivability and the value for money is actually very good. So that's my basic conclusion for my Buick Encore GX. If you haven't done so, would you kindly um, give a thumbs up, make some comments, and subscribe. That will be truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.